Lesson four, setting up a grid. A grid is defined as a structure, usually two-dimensional, made up of a series of intersecting straight or curved lines called grid lines, used to structure content. Grids come in many shapes and forms. In this lesson, we will practice customizing grids in InDesign that can then be used as the underlayment of a page layout design. Graphic designers use grids to establish parameters for a design. Grids are used to keep layout elements in alignment and separate and organize content. Setting up a grid or a wireframe for the underlayment of a layout helps guide decision making when choosing where to put design elements in your layout. Sometimes grids are established for functionality, like when organizing content for a dynamic website where content will rearrange as the site is scaled between a computer screen, a tablet, or a phone. Grids can also be established for aesthetic purposes. Whatever the reason is that you need to set up a grid, you should always set up your electronic design file to match the grid you have established for your project. Usually, you'll sketch out or draw your grid by hand first. The examples on screen show a few examples of projects designed using a grid. These are in-your-face grid designs where you can literally see the underlying grid that the graphic designer used to lay out their design elements. Newspapers, websites, poster design, and more all use grids. International typographic style, also known as Swiss style, is an era of graphic design history that is famous for designing on a grid. You may want to explore Swiss style when completing future projects or for inspiration when establishing grids for this class. There are four types of grids that can be edited in InDesign. They are guides, columns and margins, the document grid, and the baseline grid. Each is used for a slightly different intention. Let's review each now. Guides in InDesign are non-printing lines that can be used to divide the workspace. Vertical and horizontal guides are added by clicking and dragging from the horizontal and vertical ruler. Use View Show Hide Rulers to turn on your rulers if they are not visible. You can always show and hide your guides by selecting View, Grids and Guides, and then Show or Hide Guides. Guides can be deleted by selecting them and pressing the Delete key or by going to the view menu and choosing grids and guides and then delete all guides on spread. But be careful, this option, as it implies, will delete all of your guides on the page. A benefit of using guides to divide your workspace is that they're easily editable. On the fly, you can click and drag to reposition their location. Conversely, the downside to guides is that they must be set up manually on each page and you may accidentally move a guide by accident because they are so easily editable. Columns and margins are a great way to quickly divide your InDesign workspace for a layout that can use multiple columns. A standard three column layout can be set up within seconds, either when the document is created via the new document dialog or via the margins and columns dialog. It is important for columns to be set up properly when an InDesign document is created. Editing them via the layout menu and choosing margins and columns will only affect the current document page. So if your project has 36 pages, you will need to update the column settings 36 times. Another drawback when working with columns is that they only set up vertical columns. Horizontal rows needed for your grid are not included. However, you can use columns in conjunction with guides so that both vertical columns and horizontal rows are included in your grid. Whether you have seen it or not, InDesign has a default document grid. It exists, it is just hidden by default. Select the view menu, choose grids and guides, and then show document grid to make it visible. The document grid sits at the back of your design. If you wish for it to overlay your artwork, you will need to uncheck the Grids in Back option in the InDesign Preferences dialog. It is found within the Grids section of the Preferences dialog. This is also where you will edit your grid. 
By default, the document grid will be a light gray color and include a horizontal and a vertical grid line every one inch. It will also be divided into eight smaller sections using a slightly thinner grid line. You can customize the document grid to your needs for your project or even change the color if the light gray doesn't work for you. I recommend toggling the document grid on and off as you're designing. Command apostrophe or control apostrophe on a PC is the keyboard shortcut to turn the document grid on and off. A baseline grid is a different type of grid. It establishes the placement of baselines. A baseline is the imaginary line upon which type appears to sit. When text is snapped to the baseline grid, all text must snap to one of the baselines in the grid. This overrides some type settings. For example, leading is the vertical spacing between lines of type. As a graphic designer, you can control this distance. But if you snap your text to a baseline, it will override your letting settings. Essentially, your letting becomes the minimum vertical distance between the lines of type. Your text will snap to the next available baseline. If you're going to snap your text to a baseline grid, you should do so carefully and purposefully, and always make sure your baseline grid is visible when setting up your layout. The baseline grid can be turned on via the view menu. Choose view, grids and guides, and then show slash hide the baseline grid. However, nothing really happens with a baseline grid until you snap your text to it. Text can be snapped to a baseline grid at the paragraph level. So in theory, every single paragraph can either be or not be snapped to the baseline grid. With your text cursor blinking in a paragraph or with multiple paragraphs highlighted, use the option in the lower right corner of the paragraphs panel to align to the baseline grid. As soon as you align your text to the baseline grid, you will see all of the baselines in your text snap to one of the blue baselines visible on the default baseline grid. The baseline grid can be edited via the InDesign Preferences dialog. The settings to update the baseline grid are found within the grid section. InDesign users may change the color of the grid, where the grid starts, how often a grid line will appear, and the view threshold. The view threshold is the zoom view at which you will be able to see your grid. If it is too small of a zoom, you will not be able to see it. In this example, I have set the view threshold to 48% so that when I am viewing the document at 48% scale, I can see the grid. If I was to zoom in further, the grid would disappear. Baseline grids cause a little bit of chaos in your document because they will override existing type settings. This can make it frustrating to edit your design and or the words in your text. After you turn the baseline grid on and snap your text to it, you may want to use a story editor to edit your text. The story editor is a panel that pops out your text into a new window where you can focus on editing the words as opposed to the layout or the design. It makes it easier to focus on the words and not what happens to the words visually within your design as you edit them. The story editor is open via the edit menu. Choose edit and then edit in story editor. You can then edit your text however you would like to and when you're done, just close the window and the changes will have automatically updated in your InDesign layout. It should be noted that you will not be able to select the edit and story editor option unless a text frame is selected.